thank you for joining me today. As always, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tim. This is Freightmaster Resources, where we provide tips, tools, resources, industry news to help you grow and be more successful in the freight industry. Okay. Um, so uh, <laughs> the, the title of this video might have been a little intriguing. You know, maybe that's why you clicked on it. Uh, but um, I know that we've talked about uh, the kind of turnaround in the freight industry um, while it not being overly significant. Um, we are kind of starting to see just little ticks of, you know, an improvement. You know, we probably won't really see anything uh, super significant till 2025, maybe around the beginning or mid, mid Q2, um, you know, because we're going to have that January, February lull like we, tr you know, have historically. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, right, because I know everybody's kind of wanting rates to improve and things. In fact, uh, you know, it, it, as an example of uh, rates improving, I actually have a load right now. It's a spot load um, that's running between 250 and $3 a mile for a van load, and it's actually fairly light. Um, so... Um, if you're in a Kansas City, Missouri area on Thursday or going to be, uh, hit me up. All right. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't know. I might have it booked shortly after the end of this video, more than likely. But um, anywho, um, before I uh, get into today's video, um, <clears throat> I had asked a question uh, and I was really kind of hoping for some feedback from y'all, uh, but nobody's really commented or anything. Uh, in regards to like freight sales training uh, or the freight broker training. Um, and this is a couple of projects that I'm working on. I don't actually have a release date yet, uh, but kind of, you know, was looking for some of your feedback, you know, should I do like a video series on it, uh, PDF, maybe put it in an ebook or something possibly. Uh, I guess just sort of, uh, wanting more or less your feedback on what sort of a format that you guys would prefer, right? Um, and then at which point in time I would, you know, when I get it completed, I'll start making those available. Uh, well, I, I guess without any further ado, pitter patter, let's get at her, right? Um, so today we were kind of talking, I want to talk to you about uh, the bloodbath in, the, in freight brokerage right and how to survive this market mayhem okay uh right now the freight brokerage industry is in a war zone all right uh margins are shrinking faster than ever before and brokers are getting squeezed from all sides i know there's probably a few of you carriers maybe you're watching this right now going woohoo no, no it doesn't help anybody all right um so i thought we'd take a deep dive into the carnage and explore some battle tactics to stay on top, okay? Um, and I, I more or less kind of broke this down into uh, four parts with some additional notes, um, but I, 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 I kind of named them enemy number one and two, three, and four, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, and I apologize about my voice today. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's been rainy here a lot lately, so I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. But anyway, uh, so enemy number one, uh, the capacity monster. All right. Uh, imagine a battlefield overflowing with empty trucks. That's basically the current state of the freight market. Uh, there's simply too many trucks chasing too few loads. All right. And this is, again, going back to, uh, you know, what I keep talking about, building relationships improving your cold calling techniques, you know, and acquiring more business. And some of this is going to start to make sense on what I just said, right? Uh, this means carriers are forced to slash rates, uh, dragging down bro broker profits, even if they manage to snag some business, okay? Um, in the last, well, it's been longer than the last week, but it seems like last week, it, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting more and more emails, uh, you know, asking me for consulting and uh, helping to find their first freight shipper. Um, you know, and I can kind of hear the desperation in your voices and, and, and through the emails and things, 
um and I, i'm really trying on one person right um but we're, we're gonna get it done for you all right uh enemy number two uh the shrinking spread all right the gap between contract and spot rates has narrowed significantly all right while brokers can offer lower prices to desperate carriers the overall market weakness makes healthy margins a distant dream okay uh you might be experiencing this yourself um you know not every load is is a home run you know sometimes you're making three to eight percent margin um you know it, it it just depends um and i mean number three the cost creep all right just like an army needs steady supplies a brokerage needs to manage its expenses okay unfortunately costs of insurance labor everyday operations are all on the rise furthering tightening the profit noose okay um one thing i probably should have added to that is a lot of this new technology um that is coming to the industry while it being slow uh like ai for instance i i do believe in my humble opinion that uh eventually ai will be kind of the norm in, in the industry at least to some extent um you know some of these automated tools and things um we're seeing some of the bigger brokerages using it uh you know we use it to some extent um and i, I do believe we're probably going to be rolling out uh more of that and it'll soon be available um but it, in, in in the interest of time management and and labor and things i think this is kind of where things are going to be heading okay uh enemy number four uh the fuel fall right Fuel prices might be slightly higher than last year, adding another la layer of burden on operational costs. Okay. Uh, a glimmer of hope on the horizon. All right. There are some faint signs of life, right? Like we talked about, you know, in previous videos, uh, spot market activity is picking up slightly, right? Slightly. I don't want anybody to, to jump on me in the comments and be like, you said the market was turning around. Yes slightly okay it's a little sign of hope um so picking up slightly and import forecasts suggest that potential future boost for over the road freight demand um but these are distant victories right it's not going to be a big turnaround um you know it's it's going to happen very gradually um not enough to turn the tide in the immediate battle right uh the enemy within okay rising costs uh based on a recent poll over half of brokers identified rising costs as the biggest threat to their margins so we're going to break down some of those those cul culprits right fuel costs while improved from 2023 fuel prices remain volatile uh insurance and bonds uh, increased liability claims are driving up premiums and freight fraud is causing surety bond costs to skyrocket. Okay. Um, so if you're questioning as to why your bond went up, now you know. Uh, marketing expenses, right? Uh, attracting new customers isn't cheap. Um, advertising and customer acquisition are major costs, right? Whether it be time, uh, you know, or monetary, you know, uh, advertising costs. Um, it's, it, it's becoming a, a big factor. Um, labor costs, right? Salaries for both entry level and experienced brokers are on the rise. All right. Um, next up the battlefield landscape, a grim reality. Okay. Uh, industry research paints a bleak picture revenue for the brokerage industry plummeted a staggering 15.1% in 2023. The top 3.5% of brokerages now control a whopping 88% of the market share. Okay. So that's, <laughs> I, when, when I looked at that, when I, when I looked at the, those numbers, I was, I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't have been as in shock and awe as I was, but it seemed a, a, at least slightly higher than what I had anticipated. Uh, the number of brokers has shrunk by 12% since November, 2022, 
a steeper decline than the carrier population. Okay. Um, the big players are taking hits. All right. Even the industry giants haven't been spared. Major brokerages like C.H. Robinson and J.B. Hunt have reported significant drops in revenue and net income. Okay. So strategies for survival, cost control, and automation. Right. While the market might may be a battlefield, there are ways to fight back. Here's your survival kit. Number one, embrace automation. All right. Automating back office tasks like invoice processing and payment scheduling can free up resources and have a significant amount of and save a significant amount of money um, using tools and services like um, uh, Operify. Right. If you're factoring or are considering factoring again, they handle the back office over there. And if you need more information on that, I do have a link for them down below. Um, the road ahead for freight brokers is un undeniably tough, but by focusing on costs and control and leveraging automation, you can emerge from this battle stronger and ready to face whatever challenges the future throws your way. All right. Uh, you know, just like I said earlier, you know, in the beginning of this video, uh, with the implementation of AI, that kind of becoming a norm, uh, embracing automated tasks, whether it be, you know, load booking, uh, invoicing, all of these kinds of things, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's coming, right? It's undeniable. So if you're doing a lot of things by hand, and I understand that, you know, and there's probably going to be more and more of that uh, across the board in, in different aspects, you know, probably uh, not just with load boards, but, you know, your TMS, you know, and all kinds of things. Um, you know, I mean, look at technology in general, you know, it always kind of when it when new tech tech comes out, it, you know, it starts off, it seems probably kind of slow. Uh, traditionally, but then it just sort of booms. And then there's a lot of copycats and there's multiple options of things, right? So um, some more expensive than others, how elaborate of a system do you need? You know, all these, what are the setup costs, um, the recurring monthly costs, all of these kinds of things, you know, um, but if you haven't already looked into um, automation, um, even if you're not ready to implement it yet now, um, I would suggest look, looking into it, um, especially for things that you see as, you know, I'm um, just spending too much time in, in one or two particular areas and try to look at, at those automated systems that can help you out, right? And maybe even your current system is starting to implement some of that, right? Uh, as like an upgrade or something. Um, and so, you know, it, it would be good to have a phone call or shoot an email over, ask questions, right? Start looking into some of this so you're not caught off guard when this really becomes a thing, okay? Um, so, again, I know, like I said, we've talked about um, some of the uh, signs of life, you know, kind of coming back to the industry, but it's it's not over. It's, it's not going to be over very quickly. Um, and I, I kind of felt like, you know, we had sort of talked a little bit more about, you know, the market in, in regards to carriers. Okay. Um, and how it's affecting them and, you know, what they can look forward to, but we never really, I, I don't think really got into the brokerage side of things. So, um, I felt it was kind of important to, uh, bring this up. Again, I look forward to everybody's comments. If you like, have anything you'd like to add, um, don't forget to check out my recommended tools and services. Um, and, and, and again, I, I, I'd love to get your feedback on the freight sales training and the freight broker training. If you guys would really like to see that, or if I should just chuck it in the circular file, right? Um, it, it's getting to be kind of lengthy uh, to some extent, you know, what little time, spare time I do have. Um, I have been kind of pouring into that. So um, hopefully you guys want to see it. Um, and uh, 
if so i'll make it available i might just do it anyway but yeah let me know what kind of a format that you'd really you know prefer to see it in um i hope everybody's having a great day great week um i won't take up any more of your time today uh i appreciate everybody that likes shares subscribes you guys are awesome i'm, I'm digging all the comments the emails um i i really love that like you guys truly inspire me um you really do and i apologize for not doing a video yesterday um i i was up what three three a.m um the other morning and i it, there was just so much kind of going on and i'm not going to get into it uh friend of mine had been kind of is going through some things that's pretty difficult and so um yeah I'll, I'll leave it at that but um anywho uh like i said i hope everybody's having a great day uh have a great week and as always be kind to one another bye bye now